Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and initially today's video was going to be about Matt Walsh's documentary, but it turns out that the Matts are at it again. Both Matt Powell and Matt Walsh have made videos that we're going to dive into. Today's video though will be focused on the Matt Walsh video, where he tries to debunk gay marriage? You see, I already know what I'm calling this video because you would have to be quite confused to try and debunk gay marriage in my opinion. Anyway, enough bushing around the beat, let's see what Matt Walsh has to say about it. Speaking, by the way, of the, uh, I guess the front runner, the Democrat front, front runner, Pete Buttigieg, he had some thoughts uh, recently, he was on State of the Union on uh, CNN, and he had some thoughts about the Republicans who do not favor federally codifying the redefinition of marriage. Now, there are plenty of Republicans, as we saw in the House, that were on board with it, but, uh, but, that, but the majority still were not. So I want to make a point that these days, I think that most people are okay with gay marriage. Of course, there will be some countries where the majority of people will be against it. But even if you look to Japan, where it is still not legal, the majority of people in Japan are in support of gay marriage. And this is because most people realise that there's nothing wrong with gay people getting married. And the funny thing is, the people that get upset about it, like Matt Walsh, are people that it doesn't even affect. There are two groups of people that are affected by gay marriage. And that is gay people, including lesbians and bisexual people, as well as children that need to be adopted. Now given that gay people generally want gay marriage to be a thing, they've got no issue with it. And children that are put up for adoption generally want to get adopted into a family, so most of them won't have an issue with it either. So the people who it actually affects, it affects them in a positive way. So yeah, there's really no reason to be against gay marriage. Although Matt Walsh has tried to find one. You'll notice that he said that they're trying to redefine marriage. But you see, that's not what they're doing at all, because as far as I can tell, in the United States, gay marriage is already legal. The act that they're trying to pass would prevent states from making gay marriage illegal. And it will also prevent states from making interracial marriage illegal. Is that some kind of redefinition if we allow interracial couples to get married? Most people, including myself, will agree that it's not. But if you go back to the civil rights era, then you would have a lot of people that would argue like Matt Walsh here. Because they would see interracial marriage as a bad thing, and would think that allowing it is a redefinition of marriage. So yeah, people just get more accepting over time. And Pete Buttigieg is very offended and personally hurt by that, and here he is explaining why. This is really, really important to a lot of people. It's certainly important to me. I don't know, that half hour of my morning had me thinking about how much I depend on and count on my spouse every day. And our marriage deserves to be treated equally. And I don't know why this would be hard for a senator or a congressman. I don't understand how such a majority of, of House Republicans voted no on our marriage on as recently as Tuesday, hours after I was in a room with a lot of them talking about transportation policy, having what I thought were perfectly normal conversations with, with many of them on that subject, only for them to go around the corner and say that, uh, that my marriage doesn't deserve to continue. If they don't want to spend a lot of time on this, they can vote yes and move on. And that would be really reassuring for a lot of families around America, including mine. Mm. Um, a couple of things here. First of all, this guy is such an egomaniac. I mean, they all are, but especially this guy. Matt, you feel like far more of an egomaniac than Pete does. Especially considering that when it came to the book that Matt Walsh published, People suggested, hey, you should probably have consulted a children's author before publishing the book. And then Matt Walsh said, I did consult a children's author. Myself. And it's even more grating with him because he has, there's just no basis for it, for his ego. Like it has nothing to rest on, no accomplishments to rest on at all. Matt, refer to my last comment and take a look in the mirror. But he says, oh, they voted on my marriage. No, they weren't voting on your marriage, you egomaniac. That's not what the vote was. There wasn't, there wasn't a, a, a bill on the docket. What, what do you think of Pete Buttigieg's marriage? So the reason why Pete talked about his marriage specifically is because he is one of the people that could be affected by this thing. He was talking about how it is personal to him and the language that he used reflected that. Yes, he could have said they voted no to gay marriage. But that doesn't carry the same weight as they voted no to my marriage. If he had have said that they were voting no to gay marriage, it would have felt oddly detached because he is a gay man and it does affect him. 
Just because he said that doesn't mean that he's trying to make it all about him. He's just acknowledging that he is a part of the group that would be affected by this. No, specifically, it's about the should the federal government redefine marriage? Should we codify the redefinition of marriage on a federal level? That was the question. Matt sure does like talking about definitions, doesn't he? It's almost like he thinks that definitions are sacred and should never be changed. Whereas in reality, definitions change all the time. Language evolves as time goes on. A good example is phobia or phobic. A lot of people will say, you can't call Matt Walsh transphobic or homophobic because he's not actually afraid of gay people. He's not actually afraid of trans people. Funnily enough, that is an argument that is going to be brought up in my next video as well because Matt Powell thinks that he can't be transphobic because he's not afraid of trans people. But going by that logic, does that mean that we cannot call materials hydrophobic when, you know, they're not actually afraid of water because they can't have feelings, they're materials. Of course, if there were people that were saying that you can't use the term hydrophobic to describe materials, people would be like, who cares? Because most people don't care if a definition that everybody uses is incorrect to some people. Most people don't care if marriage is being redefined to what everyone agrees is the definition that marriage is. But like I said earlier, it's not even being redefined because gay marriage is legal. And by the way, the people who answer no to that, well, there's, there's, a, there's a number of reasons why you might answer no specifically to the question of should the federal government codify it. So I kind of get what he's saying there without him saying it. He's kind of saying it should be up to the states. Now this may be because I'm not American enough, but I don't think that this should be left up to the states. That's because I don't think that someone should be discriminated against simply because they happen to live in a state that allows that discrimination. I think that every adult should have the right to get married to other adults, regardless of which state they happen to be in. It is funny how a lot of people in America are all for freedom right up until it's the states taking away that freedom. Then it's states' rights. But for the people who are critics of the whole, uh, you know, of the, of the redefinition of marriage on any level, they're not saying that your marriage doesn't deserve to continue. What they're saying is that your marriage can't exist because marriage is a particular thing. From a legal point of view, that is literally the same thing, Matt. Because currently, legally, they are married. If it stops being recognized as a marriage, then that marriage is effectively ended. Like, you can try and say your marriage was never a marriage in the first place, but it doesn't change the fact that they did get married and it was legally recognised as a marriage. And most people accept that it is a valid marriage, regardless of what you think, Matt. As I tried to explain last week, and as many people have attempted to explain, this is all a question of definition. And the idea for thousands of years is that marriage by definition is an in-principle procreative union between a man and a woman. And it serves as the foundation of the family, which serves as the foundation of human society. That, that was the answer. That was the definition. That's what it was. Okay, so firstly, just because something has been a certain way for thousands of years does not mean that it should be that way. Slavery was seen as okay for thousands of years. That doesn't mean that it's okay. But that aside... Gay marriage has existed for thousands of years. Sure, it wasn't a very common thing because, big surprise, most people aren't gay. But it still happened. And funnily enough, in the 4th century, the Romans changed the definition of marriage to outlaw it. You see, I'm a bit of a traditionalist, I say facetiously. So I think that marriage should be what it was before the Romans outlawed gay marriage. By the way, that is a joke because I don't think that anyone's spouse should be considered their property. Turns out that marriage has been changed a couple of times because it wasn't always the greatest. That's it. And then people like Pete Buttigieg came along and said, well, it's not that anymore. And then the question in response has always been, well, then what is it if it's not that? Pete Buttigieg hasn't answered that question. Oh, no. He's setting up for a second documentary, which is going to be titled, What is Marriage? But Matt, the reason why that question hasn't been answered is because most people don't ask it. I'm sure if you were to ask him in good faith, he would be perplexed by that question 
because it's not a normal question that people ask, but he would probably answer it. Now, I may not be Pete Buttigieg, but I do have an answer for you. And that is, it's a legal recognition of a relationship. Currently between two people, but we'll change that eventually. Matt Walsh is going to be terrified when he learns that after thousands of years, we still haven't finished changing the definition of marriage. He says, well, my marriage deserves to be treated equal to, to other marriages. Well, but, but, it, but equal means the same, Pete. And is it the same? Is your relationship, is it the same as, it, is it in principle, in its substance, in its function, is it the same as my relationship with my wife? And the answer is no, because my relationship with my wife has the potential to create new human beings and yours doesn't, so. All right, so every marriage is different and people get married for different reasons. Most people today do get married because of love. However, it didn't always used to be that way. But love isn't the only reason why people get married. Sometimes people get married because they want to move to the country that their partner is in. Sometimes they get married so that they can adopt. Sometimes they get married because of all the legal benefits that marriage has. Yes, some people get married because they want to have kids with their partner, but here's the thing. I'm not sure if Matt is aware of this, but you don't have to be married in order to make a baby. Like, that's not how that works. It would be great if not being married was a form of contraception, but you can still get pregnant if you're unmarried. I'm not sure if your parents told you that, Matt. But just because some marriages are about children doesn't mean that all of them are. In fact, recently, my mum got married. She cannot have children. Yet she got married anyway. Should her marriage be invalidated because she can't have children? Of course not. But if we're going to say that gay marriages can't exist because they can't have children, then the same would have to go for any straight marriage that can't have children. Because otherwise, you'd be being logically inconsistent. Well, homophobes tend to be logically inconsistent, but that's beside the point. That is a difference, right? That's a difference. Well, we can all agree. No question about it. That's a difference. Yes, Matt, I agree. There is a difference, but just because a marriage is different doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Is it, is it an important difference? Is it a definitional difference? No. I would say absolutely it is. Well, he's got me there. Guess he's debunked gay marriage. Well, everyone, time to pack up your things and be straight because gay marriage doesn't exist anymore. Of course it is. But even putting all that to the side, you know, he's... You know, I thought that he was going to expand on that and explain why there's a significant difference, but instead all we just got is, of course it is. Now, some people might say, well, you didn't expand on your position. You just said that, no, it's not a significant difference. But, you see, I would say that the burden of proof is on Matt to explain why it is a significant difference, because he's making the claim that there is a significant difference there. Why does being able to have children make a significant difference? Because gay people can adopt and people can have children outside of wedlock. And that's ignoring the fact that some straight couples either don't want kids or can't have kids. So if kids are the issue, why are we focusing on gay marriage versus straight marriage? Let's be honest here, Matt Walsh just finds gay people to be icky. He should just come out and say it, and then we can go, okay, we already knew that. Let's go on about our day. He says that, well, well how, how, could, how could we talk about uh, they, they would sit and talk about transportation policy with me and then, and then go and vote the way they did. Why should, so, what, so they can't talk about, you, you cannot have a productive conversation about transportation policy with someone unless they agree with your definition of marriage? I don't know, it's kind of hard to have conversations with people who want to take your rights away. Like, you can have conversations about random things with people, but if you know that they want to take your rights away, that makes it kind of awkward, doesn't it? I guess for those Republicans, they figured, yeah, okay, well, I might not agree with this, but we can still talk about transportation. Why can't we? I mean, Pete didn't say that he can't have those conversations with them anymore. It's just one of them things where it's kind of weird where you have a conversation and they treat you normally, and then later they want to take your rights away? That has got to feel weird. And when you do learn things like that, it would obviously change your perspective of that person. You're the one who sets down kind of the, the, the ground rules here and says, well, you have to agree with everything about my lifestyle or we can't talk about anything. 
That's your problem. That, that's that's uh, that's you deciding to do that. I feel like Matt Walsh is just reading way too much into it. I keep on having to go back and just make sure that I'm remembering it correctly because I don't remember him saying, oh, we can't have these conversations now. Yeah, I just went back and rewatched it. So I just went back and rewatched it a couple times and yeah, at no point did he say, we can't have these conversations now. And even if that's what he meant by that, it's kind of part of his job that he has to have conversations with those people. So he can't really do anything about it, can he? So yeah, that was Matt Walsh's video attempting to debunk gay marriage. And my point that he is confused still sticks because that didn't really feel anything like a debunk. It seemed more like a video about Pete Buttigieg. I guess if you attempt to run for president as a gay person, that makes you the gay lord. But here's some advice to Matt Walsh, although let's be honest, he's probably not watching. Before you try and debunk something, make sure your argument is more than your definition is wrong. Because there is no such thing as an objectively correct definition, especially for something that we just invented like marriage. But anyway, that is it for this video. Leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Make sure you ring the bell icon so that you get notified of my videos, especially if you want to catch my next one about Matt Powell. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Shaki, Wolfie, Mori, Grey Morghost, Kid Vicious, Sacha Campbell, Militant Agnostic, Kitten McKitten from Kittentown, Craig D'Amelio, and Nerithan Termson. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon, there should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.